Hi YouTube, as a big fan of Stranger Things I just wanted to make these quick models. They only took me about three days and I'm going to show you the process step by step. Step one for the first polywog stage is just this little bit of aluminium foil squashed to a rough tadpole shape. Step two is to cover the foil with some milliput which is a two part putty and I've just added a couple of little feet on the front. Step three is to add extra bulges for the tummy couple of extra bulges at the base of the tail and one on the front of the head just to make the head a bit longer. Step four is the fun bit, adding the wrinkles. So if you just put a very thin layer of milliput over the top um, and then I just press through a bit of plastic sheet um, and I just use a tool like this with a kind of um, sharpish ridge on it and then you can just press it in. This makes really nice smooth wrinkles when you peel off the plastic. Right, for the second stage in the life cycle, I've done the same thing again, rough sort of shape in aluminium foil. Next step is to cover it with milliput again, let that harden, and then just drill through with one of these little drill vices. And then I've just pushed wire through and just made these rough leg shapes. From there, you can roughly cover the wire with milliput again just to get the rough overall leg shapes. Right, on to the next stage in the life cycle, this is the demo dog. So I've just started again with an aluminium foil shape. I covered that with milliput again, let it harden, and then again use a drill vise to make the holes and then push wire through, same as before. Then you can start covering the legs with more milliput. Right, for the main creature, the demogorgon, I started off with this wire frame. This is just forming an armature for the whole figure. Next I bulked out that armature with some aluminium foil, really squash it on so it's nice and firm. Next I applied the milliput in thin layers and then pressed into it, mainly using the tool that I showed you before for doing the wrinkles. What's quite nice is because it takes four hours to set rock hard, you can just do one part at a time. So I did like the chest here, let that dry, and then you can do like I did the thighs next, and then you can do the arms and just kind of work your way around the whole figure. At this point I'd done the upper arms on the figure and another um, part of the leg section. Here I've also done the rough sort of star shape for his head. It looks really um, rubbish at the moment but this is how I started it off. Next I pinched the edges of that star shape just with my fingers and it gives it a slightly more refined look. Um, when it starts to harden I can then work into it even more. Next I put this star shape on a little pot and I just press down in the centre. That brings the edges up a bit like a flower and then I'll refine this more as it starts to harden. This is how I started the hands. I then attached the hands, roughly shaped the fingers. I've done some neck folds and I've attached his head on. Next I cut out some plywood bases using a jigsaw and I've just rounded the edges a little bit with some sandpaper. Um, you can see here I've made some little eyeballs. I drilled some holes first, put the eyeballs in and then did the eyelids over the top. I've also refined his front feet a little bit just to give it that webbed foot kind of effect just using a little Dremel drill. That's it for the first stage of Dart the Polywog. For the second stage here you can see I've added more to the face. Um, I've added more skin texture again. So the same thing I did before pressing in the wrinkles only this time I've added quite a few holes as well just to give extra texture. On the feet I've refined them a little bit to give the webbed sort of effect again with a Dremel drill. Um, and that's it for him apart from I added a uh, fin to the tail as well. Then for another stage in the life cycle, the Demo Dog. I'm really sorry, I completely forgot to film any of the in-between stages of this one and you can see I've done quite a lot more to it. So I started off with the face flaps, did the top middle one first and then added all of the others after that. Um, I've put all the muscles in and this is just a case of just getting some milliput, making a rough um, sort of muscle shape put it on and then you just are smoothing in all the edges to attach it. So it's a bit different to how I do the Demogorgon where I'm actually pushing into the milliput. This is like adding bumps one at a time to get this kind of effect. And it, it is really nice and effective way of doing it but it takes a bit of time to do. Next for the refinements on the Demogorgon I added more milliput on the tips of each of the kind of petal shapes on his head and then just kind of pinch them out to make them a bit longer. I've added this circle of milliput in the center as well 
and um, push the edges to kind of smooth that in. Uh, I actually used a drill to chop off little sections of the arms just to make them a bit thinner. Um, you can do that with a sort of a um, grinding tool on the Dremel drill. You can see here I've actually done a lot of the patterns as well using a Dremel drill at the lower parts of the legs. Um, I've cut off his hands and the reason for that is because they needed to be longer. So what I've done is added more milliput to make them a lot longer and then I've drilled a little hole on the edge of each hand so that I can push the um, wire into the hole and glue them on and then just add a bit of milliput just to do the wrists and reattach them. I will refine these hands a little bit more as well because the fingers are still too fat but I'll just use the Dremel drill for that with a few little thin grinding tools. Right, for the painting stages on the Polywog, I just did a mix of yellow ochre and a tiny bit of red just to give this overall base colour. Next I did a bit of mottling on his back and sides with some olive green. Same sort of mottling again, but this time not quite as much, with a mix of olive green and oxide of chromium. Then this darker green is just oxide of chromium on its own. You can see I've done much more kind of blotchy texture with this one. For the reddish tinges I just used a mix of cadmium red and magenta and you can see I've gone basically from underneath up the sides a little bit and then just along some of the edges. Then I painted his eyes black and I've also painted all these yellow markings. The yellow markings are just done with a mix of cadmium yellow and lemon yellow. Right, the painting steps for the next polywog stage are basically the same. So start off with this mix of yellow ochre and a little bit of um, cadmium red. Just for the overall base colour again, same as before. Olive green again, I watered it down and then just applied it pretty liberally over most of the animal just leaving patches where you want um, other colours to go. Next I used oxide of chromium green, just a little bit darker, and I've just added more mottling with that. Then the cadmium red mixed with magenta. Again, this can be slightly watered down to fade it in. Remember you're going basically from his tummy upwards um, to give this kind of nice effect like he's sort of slightly reddish underneath. This next stage was about darkening him up, really, just to give him an overall appearance of being darker than the first polywog stage. So I just used um, emerald green mixed with black, and you can really water this down. You can get it into all of those sort of pores and things on his back, and all of the wrinkles. You can see it shows up in just all the little gaps in the wrinkles. That's because it was really watered down, so when you apply it, it kind of trickles into all those kind of deeper parts. Right, the base colour for the Demo Dog is a sort of like dark flesh colour. So you can mix yellow ochre, tiny bit of cadmium red like before, um, but I added a tiny bit of white to it as well, just to lighten it. Then to the flesh colour that I'd made already, I added some red and some blue. So cadmium red and ultramarine, and just really watered it down. And then I've applied this over most of it and it's gone into all of the deeper areas again so that all those deep areas appear a lot darker than the sort of highlight areas. Next I made a really pale flesh colour. So you mix yellow ochre, a bit of cadmium red and this time lots of white. Um, try and make it really pale because this is for all the highlight areas. And I did this dry brush. So if you haven't done dry brush before, you basically take your paint put some on your brush and then you rub your brush on a bit of kitchen paper until there's hardly any paint left on the brush at all, like basically none. And then you just are rubbing it into all of the top surfaces of your creature to bring out all the highlights. Okay, this is actually the next stage now as well where I've added just little hints of like a green colour. So this is green watered down a lot. This is the oxide of chromium green really watered down and you can just put little hints here and there. Again mainly into sort of areas that would be in shadow actually. Next I did a similar thing with some watered down lemon yellow just adding little hints of it to mainly the upper surfaces. Finally I really watered down some magenta and added it to his tummy area underneath his chin 
and just a few other areas. It's really worth remembering that at any point when you've done your model and you think you're pretty much finished, you can always add just little hints of colour here and there just by really watering it down. Um, don't be afraid to do that because quite often it makes such a difference to the overall look of your model. Okay, for the Demogorgon I wanted a really dark base colour. So I've made this really deep purple using ultramarine and a tiny bit of cadmium red. And I've watered it down a little bit so it gets into all of those little grooves. I really want all of the detail to really show up on this one. Next I made a very dark flesh colour just using yellow ochre and cadmium red. And again I've used dry brush to just go over the surfaces just to show up the detail. Remember if you are doing dry brush and you make it too wet all that happens is the paint ends up going into all those little grooves and then you're not showing up your detail at all. The paint brush has got to be pretty much dry. Next I added some white to my flesh colour just to make it even brighter and I've done the same thing I've gone over and I've dry brushed it. Every time you dry brush you can go less and less so that you're putting less on uh, but you're still bringing out the highlight areas. Next I painted inside the head sections with a maroon colour and then I've gone around the edges with a brighter red which is just the cadmium red on its own but I've also got in with a really dark purple right in the centre where it meets the circular part of the head um, and that makes it look much deeper. Okay this is the first polywog stage of dart all finished um, if I was going to do any more to this, I suppose what I could do is uh, maybe paint the base, um, but also what I could do is spray lacquer him. If you spray lacquer something, it makes it look shiny. Uh, I don't always like that effect, but actually if you want to make a creature look a little bit slimy, it's a good way to go with a spray lacquer. Here's the second polywog stage of dart, and again I could spray lacquer this one. You can see I've done a bit more to him since I showed you him last. I've done the inside of the mouth and these sort of chest details. Quite a bit more mottling as well. And I think it looks much better overall. He's much darker, like I say, than the first stage of dart. And uh, that's really nice when they're next to each other. It shows him up nicely. Um, I've also added the yellow patterning on his tail and his back as well, which makes quite a difference, I think, to the overall sort of contrast of the creature. This is the Demodog all finished. I don't think I've done anything more to it since you saw it last, but I'll just rotate it here so you get one last look at it. This one again, this would look really good, I think, with some spray lacquer on it. The Demodogs are particularly uh, creepy looking things, and I think um, that sort of wet look added to this would um, just kind of finish it off nicely. And this is the Demogorgon all finished. Um, the main thing with this that has changed is that I've added all the teeth to the head. Now all these teeth I had to make out of cocktail sticks and what I did was just kind of shave bits of cocktail stick off with a scalpel and then individually cut these kind of little splinters and it was a bit of a faff I'll be honest. It took quite a long time to then kind of dip each one in super glue and attach it on. It took a long time but I think it's done the job and it's got really nice teeth now so it was worth it. Um, also here I've gone in with even more dry brushing with even lighter colours. This really brings out all the detail that I put in when I was sculpting him. Um, so I really like that because there's nothing worse than adding lots of detail when you're doing a sculpt and then the detail not showing up afterwards. It's definitely worth getting your dry brushing right so that all of those details show up. Incidentally, I was going to mention that I didn't do as much detailing on the back of him. And the main reason for that is because it takes a long time to do. I've got lots of creatures that I still want to make. So any time that I can kind of save, I do. So I've done a bit of detailing on his back, but you're going to display him, you know, so that you're looking at the front of him uh, pretty much all of the time. So it didn't matter to me too much if the back wasn't as detailed as the front. Okay, while you have one last look at them all together, um, I'd just like to thank Milliput for sponsoring this channel. And if you haven't tried Milliput already, it's a two-part putty, sets rock hard in four hours, 
and it's really great for this kind of thing. I use it for pretty much all the sculpts that I do. Um, so get out, get yourself some and give it a try. Um, also hit subscribe to see any videos that I post in the future. Uh, check out the videos that I've done already. There's a lot of movie creatures, um, loads of unusual weird things. They're the things that I like the most. Um, yeah, thanks for watching and I will catch you in the next video.